Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the new generation of the Polo. This is the Volkswagen Polo GTI and the car comes courtesy of Apex at the Nürburgring. So make sure to check them out in the pinned comment as well as the description and give them some love on Instagram. Anyways, let's quickly open the engine bay of this real hot hatch. And there is the engine. Okay, the engine cover is off. This is a 2 liter TSI engine. Unlike the Polo which was sold in India which used a 1.8. Of course the car looks really nice and slick but is more of an evolution of the Polo which is sold in the Indian market which has completed hold your breath 10 years. The lights look really very nice. I love the attention to detail inside the lights. Just look at this red element, the DRL, the projector setup, GTI written right up front and of course the fog lamps which have the cornering function but unfortunately they are not finished in LEDs. The car looks really very nice in this black color somehow and this is a car which actually measures more than 4 meters in length unfortunately that's the reason why the new generation of the Polo is not coming to India anytime soon. So it says GTI on the side right there and this car is running on Michelin rubber yeah specific for the track I believe 215 18s and uh, the brakes have been upgraded as well red brake calipers on this car and of course Apex Nurburg stickering which honestly does not add more power to the vehicle but certainly the color treatment looks pretty nice at the rear of course it looks very similar to the polo which we get in the Indian market but you know if you have a keen eye you would know that this is the latest generation of the polo now behind you can hear a lot of loud noises because we are here on the green head right now GTI badging and the lights well they are beautiful and timeless twin exhausts not for sure because this car actually has the go it also has a rear spoiler along with a stop lamp a large antenna and the boot well it's empty I believe the spare wheel would have been removed so that oh no it doesn't come with a spare wheel or does it anyways that is to fill air and we've got a first aid kit as well that red one storage space here and there the rear seat split forward 60-40 and the doors don't feel heavy somehow at least the bootlet did not meanwhile blackened out the windows of this car door pockets are decent sized and you've got this typical gti seat covers as well which look really very nice as well actually the color treatment is kind of unique meanwhile this is a polo which actually has some amount of space at the rear so first and foremost let me get inside and tell you that there's good amount of knee room on offer as well as scooped out seat bag magazine holder under thigh support is not that great meanwhile you can see the headroom is just about decent for a 6 feet 2 inch person. My hair is actually not touching so there's some amount of clearance here. The light placement in the center which work like this and uh, not much to talk about the rear because we don't get a center armrest but we get three headrests. All of them adjustable. Love the red stitching on this headrest as well as on the seats. Look really nice but there's a massive hump here which actually eats into the practicality of the cabin. The dashboard looks super duper awesome. Meanwhile, right ahead we've got the Glanza. Yeah, the Glanza standing right ahead, which is a true hot hatch. It's not a rebadged Baleno. Okay, the window area could have been bigger, but doesn't really cause the claustrophobic feeling. The wind is blowing so hard and fast. I know you guys are really thinking about the Glanza, so I'm going to do a quick tour of the Glanza as well. So this is the Glanza, the Glanza V. It's a race prepped car, gets ABS, massive exhaust as well. And on the inside, you've got a roll cage with a GoPro mount there too. So, actually, but it's a very old car and gets these red colored wheels. No ground lens, no plate between the body and the wheels because that lowered. Gets a hood scoop, which I believe is functional. This car will absolutely fly, but you know, we are going to be talking about the Polo GTI, which is also a very practical car for the road. First and foremost, there is no passive entry, which is a bit disappointing. These controls look similar to the one on the current generation of the Polo sold in India. Large door pockets and it's making this buzzing sound. But you see, the front seats are extremely comfortable, extremely nice with great bolstering. Okay, now it will stop making noises. I love the how the infotainment system has been integrated. The color of the dashboard is so nice because it's finished in black with a silver treatment. And the center console doesn't look busy either. You've got a 12-volt charging socket, twin cup holders and below the front center armrest there's storage as well. This is the handbrake of the vehicle. This is the mode select of the car. So let's do one thing. Let's turn on the vehicle and there it roars to life. Meanwhile, the glove box is decent sized and quality fit finish is just super awesome here. You obviously get a mirror along with a light. Same as the case here as well, you get a mirror along with a light. There is a sunglass holder right there on the top and plenty of lights as well. The switches for the lights could have been of higher quality. It kind of feels cheap somehow auto dimming inside rear view mirror. The screen is really nice and legit. 
Meanwhile, AC vents, AC controls, there's a mode selector here, so you can decide which mode you want to drive. Sport, normal, eco, and individual, the car always remains on sport somehow. Okay, let's get into reverse. So reverse parking camera is actually missing on this particular car, but you get reverse parking sensors, which is actually a good thing. And obviously, Spark Pilot is there as well. The cluster looks super duper awesome on this vehicle and uh, similar buttons which you see on the Polo. This is the switch for the cruise control, which you're not going to use on the Nürburgring for sure. And this car is only driven on the Nürburgring and you can browse through a lot of information right there from range, driving information, trip, consumption, oil temperature and whatnot. So beautiful screen. It is a digital display which looks really legit and nice. This is actually the controls for the headlights. The car looks super premium. And these are the controls for the wipers. The wipers work really nice on this vehicle. And there was some sort of a delay in the wipers moving. But now when they have moved, you realize they do a splendid job. This is the switch for the indicator as well as the pass by. Meanwhile, let's get into the screen. It's a very nice and fluid screen. So first we need to turn it on and there it turns on navigation. And you know what? When you actually get your fingers near, then the screen shows a lot more function. So here, there the functions come. As you see, we are on Nürburgring right now. Now, let's listen to an audio right away, which is kind of weird here when you're sitting on the Nürburgring. So get into radio. I don't know what radio is going to play, but anyways. So we are off at. And you can listen Audio quality is really very nice as well and this is actually the button for the hazard light everything in this car feels super awesome well built and this is a start stop button this is for traction control this is for the parking sensors of this vehicle and there's storage space below here along with twin usb ports as well trust me if vw decides to launch this car in india it's going to be a massive success now gti is written on the steering wheel just to remind you that this is some serious kit no joke here and obviously you've got great stitching as well but the most important question right now is how is the car's horn? It is loud AF. It's extremely loud. I hope I'm not woken the neighbors, but trust me, the cars moving around are just so much more louder. And you've got Apple CarPlay, you've got MirrorLink, you've got Android Auto Connectivity. This car is perfect if it's launched in India under rupees 10 lakhs. Baleno will be eaten up alive, but VW needs to launch this spec of a car. Not the GTI, but even with the one liter engine, it will still work. Now here in Germany, obviously you need lane departure warning and a lot of systems are compulsory and mandatory. It also gets six airbags. So yeah, in terms of features, in terms of equipment, driving ability, each and everything, this Polo is mind boggling. Flat bottom steering wheel. What a car, what quality. But honestly, we are here at the Nürburgring. So what are we doing? Let's get driving right away. All right, we are driving the Volkswagen Polo GTI on the Nürburgring right now. And this car produces 200 horsepower. Meanwhile, torque output is 320 Newton meters, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour should be under seven seconds. Actually, the punch from the motor is really very nice. We obviously had the old GTI on sale in India. And as you can see, the performance is mind boggling because the car really goes now. This is very safe a vehicle because it's front wheel drive. So you don't really have to worry about getting the tail out. And you know, near limit understeer is obviously present. The sound from the engine is really very nice and surprisingly, surprisingly surprised that, you know, the steering is actually quite nice on this car. Unlike what we've seen in VW cars, the car remains dead stable. Sounds really very nice. There's a lot of punch on offer and it reaches around 180 kilometers per hour without any first whatsoever. The tires are offering great grip as well. And every time you get into the solid, you realize that, you know, there's no flat spot in the power delivery. It just pushes hard and fast. The steering, the balance, everything is so surreal in a Volkswagen Polo. That's absolutely stunning. The brakes are very powerful as well. You just flow through the corners. That's how well it does actually. And I love the brakes on this car. The brakes are not stock, are they? Uh, no, they're not. Okay. So this is Misha from Apex who's helping us and guiding us through the lap. The brakes aren't stock. That's why they're so powerful and so sure footed as well. This is known as the green hell because it's surrounded with a lot of greenery and it is not an easy track to drive. That's why Misha has been instructing us and I'm actually quite clueless right now because I'm on the track for the very first time today but having a ball of a time, the punch from the motor, look at it, red line all the way at 6000 RPM, 200 horsepower, rather 200 PS of power, 197 horsepower, 2 litre engine, the old one had a 1.8. Yeah, they actually have upgraded the motor. It's not the sharpest of hot hatches. However, it's a whole lot of fun and we have a chance of this actually coming to India. Just hear the motor. Absolutely stunning. We've got paddle shifters as well, just in case you want to shift gears. And 
my lines are all over the place at the moment but still just such an enjoyable experience driving a polo no matter what happens this is a car which puts a massive smile on the face the direction change everything is so pinpoint accurate somehow and thankfully we have good weather and like when we were driving the McLaren so in 20 years when it was snowing today it's not it's hot it's nice and that is one of the reasons why we are able to get hard into the throttle but this one we drive there's no problem whatsoever now this is a nice straight see the polo pull hard and fast and uh, we are doing 175 kilometers per hour a little bit of movement ride quality is not the best as such and uh, are we going to do 200 there we are 200 km per hour and brake because this is a 70 zone brakes are so nice and so sure footed so this polo needs to come to India we need to get the 1 litre polo first with the new generation we are still getting the old one 10 years of polo unfortunately what car is that? Uh, it's a Lotus it's a Lotus oof what an experience <laughs> glad you enjoyed it where does it actually start from? Uh, well this is the start pretty much. Okay. We, we're on the track now, so after the cone, mm -hmm. we can proceed. Okay, aim for the middle of the bridge. Alright. To, to the left curbstone, past the left curbstone, to the bottom right orange barrier, and stay on the right side. In the bottom, start steering to the left curb and right curb, in a straight smooth line. Right curbstone and to the outside. Left. 
sides. And yes. Left curb, right curb, and then going straight towards the right side of the track. Okay, aiming for the small white side ahead of you, and now on the brakes towards the side, one of three. Very good. Let go left curb stone, and to the outside right, end of the right curb stone on the brakes, beginning of the left curb turn in. So here, brakes, and turn left curb stone. And then towards the right curb, Yokohama sign left, and then stay left, and motorcycle sign on the brakes. Staying left, and here on the brakes, staying left, let go right curb stone, and to the outside left, and then to the fence on the right, before the fence, gentle tap on the brake, and then to the left curb, and right curb, so we're braking, let go, left curb stone, let go brakes, uh, right curb stone, and to the left side, to the left fence, on the brakes again, let go, second right curb stone, miss the first one, aim for the second one, and transition to the left side of the track and staying left. Very good, stay left. And now hold the brakes. Harder, 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 harder. Let go, turn in, right curb. And brake again to the left curb stone. A bit more braking, this is the slowest section of the track. Okay, perfect, the left curb, then to the right curb, and to the 90 side on the left. And then staying left. Fast car behind us, stay right. So let the troops stay right. Slow down here a bit, once we're off the line, let go the brakes and stay right. Left, stay left. 